Hello, my Room 21 friends. It's Missy and Ciola. I have missed you so much over the past week. And I know I told you that I didn't have any physical books that I could read to you, but I did find a way that I could still read with you on the computer. So I'm going to read one of my favorite books today. It's called Spots, and it has the same author and illustrator. It's Diane Alber. And today I'm just going to read with you for pleasure. Sometimes that's really important. We think a lot about how we need to keep practicing certain things and looking for certain things in our books, but sometimes it's just important to also take time to read to relax and enjoy reading. So I hope you enjoy this book. This is a story about finding spots. Just look for circles, speckles, and dots. They can bubble up big or shrink down quite small. Do you think you are able to spot them all? Some spots are stinky and some spots are clean and some are the craziest you've ever seen. They love to be spotted, believe it or not. So when you see one, just point and yell spot. The thing about spots that makes them so great is all the happiness they can create. They add a design to each space they are on. Just look at this lizard, this frog, and python. To find some more spots, let us visit the zoo. Leopards and cheetahs and tall giraffes too have unique spots from their heads to their toes but only the leopard has spots like a rose. If you go to a farm and you hear a loud moo, just look for a cow, they'll have quite a few. You might not expect to see a spot so big, especially the one on this large smelly pig. One more animal that we just can't forget is a Dalmatian who lives as a firehouse pet. This spotted friend has a large amount. So many, in fact, they will be hard to count. Reading can be a great way to explore spots that you may not have seen before. An exclamation point has one line on his head and a question mark has a hook there instead. A period ends a sentence, a colon starts a list, and an ellipsis is where a long pause will exist. Now that you have been able to spot a few, here's a secret. You can make them too. You can paint or scribble or cut them out. Just having fun is what it's all about. They love to be counted from 10 to one, which might be backward, but it's so much fun. Try adding a beak and two feathery wings. You can make a lovebird that so sweetly sings. You can also make bugs of all different kinds, just to make some more spots and add some dark lines. If bugs aren't your thing, that is quite okay too. You can make a small creature that's covered in blue. Add one spot in orange and one in lime green. Together, they make one big monstrous scene. If you like yummy sweets and you're very ambitious, then make two desserts that are fun and delicious. A spot for a cherry can make ice cream extra sweet, while more spots for gumballs make one tasty treat. Now let's look at a group of really small spots. Art called pointillism is a pattern of dots. Look closely and you'll see them all in a row, but from far away, they'll make a rainbow. You can also see spots by day and by night. Just look at this sun and this moon shining bright or a dozen balloons with long curly strings. You can make spots be so many things. Now you're an expert at finding some spots. It's time to start practicing by making lots. And when you're done, make a story to share. 
so that these spots can spread fun everywhere. Friends, I hope you enjoyed our story together today as much as I did. If you want to listen to it again, you are more than welcome to do that. And now that you've seen all of these ways we can find spots around us, maybe you can spend some time trying to make your own spots in your own creative way and feel free to share that. 